I'm in Mastercam's mill turn environment, which allows me to do uh, B-axis uh, milling and simulate the whole process with a full-blown machine simulator along with sinking of tool turrets. The advantage of running a B-axis style machine is I'm able to tilt the head and machine. Those do require some custom tools that I could um, create and develop off of uh, websites and actually grab models and stuff and download them. So I'm going to build one here. I already have my job setup stuff all done in the mill turn environment. So that's all done. It's a very, very simple file. I want to do a simple rough operation. We'll just rough some material here. We'll go in and create a 3D tool. And we'll call it, this is an 80 degree uh, diamond insert for roughing is what we typically use it for. So I've named it my shortcuts and stuff what I have. And you can label it whatever I have. 80 degree um, roughing tool. Go grab a step file is the file that you'll actually download off of a website that you can go get um, from holders and stuff. I happen to grab this one off of uh, Sanvix or Iscar's website. Here is Iscar's website right here that I grabbed the file from. Just download it, open it up. Takes a couple minutes to tessellate. Comes in and grab. Now I have, even though the inserts in this file, I have to pick just the holder. So I have the holder. A great manufacturer's code on this is this uh, number that I have there. What would I like to have is the plane collect uh, connection. Um, I could come back and grab this plane on the backside. That's what's going to mount up against the turret itself, B-axis. I'm going to also grab a hold of the diameter to grab. We'll grab that edge right there. So there is the parameters I fill out for the holder. Next thing I'll come in and describe the insert. I'm going to load the exact same step file again because it was already loaded with the holder. We'll open up the step file, grab the insert, and it's only picking the insert out of this assembly. And it's going to use that insert mated exactly the way it sits in the holder right there. We can now describe the insert. We call it 80 degree um, rough. So now I can describe the insert, name it something. Rough, looking for the quarter radius. Picks the quarter radius of the tool, picks it right off the model. I picked that solid face. We'll grab it's a offset number. Right hand or left hand, I haven't seen that made a difference on this style of tool that makes a difference. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is everything, the insert and the holder are all mated together. They're all in good shape right now. Uh, what what plane am I going to use for a cutting plane for where the cutting edge is? I'm going to pick the top plane. Let's pick the top plane, and it actually will slice up the insert of what it actually wants to cut, and this is a holder that it's actually going to use for avoidance and collision geometry. I've done this a couple of times, and I've found that I need to flip this over to have the insert to go the other direction. Insert up is going that way. So that describes the insert that I need. The boundary looks pretty good to me um, as the way, way it's actually described. I can show the model translucent and you can kind of see through the part a little bit to see what the boundary looks like. <clears throat> How do you want it mounted it into the machine? Um, I know that this tool will run counterclockwise. So it's flipped upside down. I know for a mill turn environment, the tools all have to be described horizontally from the top view. So that is the position of the tool that I need as I machine this part. 
The next thing I need to do is because I will cut um, along the Z and along the face with this tool, I'm going to put the tip of the tool right spec depth at the point so I can offset it that way. Now I'll come in and grab a clearance angle. Then you're going to use this for clearance of the tool and some kind of a height. I can pick a couple of radiuses. We'll pick this radius. And there is a radius also in here, right? Comes with a number. It's a little bit too far for me to back, so we'll back this down a little bit for saying that's what we'll label to be taken as a depth of cut without violating into the seat of the tool. End clearance from the side, we'll grab that. We'll type in the same thing for clearance. There we go. So now I have set this tool up correctly to be able to machine both across the face and across the diameter of a part. Other parameters that I might want to change, maybe the feed per tooth, maybe the surface feet of what I'm cutting. I also like to include um, rough depth of cut, a couple hundred thousandths of the pass. Um, how about coolant on after the tool change so it comes in there. So I've described at least some basics of what I need for this particular tool to do what I need it to. Here's my 80 degree tool, 80 degree rough. Click OK. I have to describe this tool as what angle I would like it to machine at. We'll kick in at 45 degrees as we go. So the tool will actually be positioned at 45 degrees. Depth of cut, 200 thousandths per pass. Use the stock. Let it generate a tool path. And to show you the simplest way to verify the tool path is the tool is at 45 degrees, keeps the big B-axis head that's out here somewhere out of the way as I rough, and I don't get so close to it with my uh, tool. And that is through verify. If I would decide to look at this in machine sim, big advantage of our mill turn environment, We load it into the Mastercam Expert. Not much to do here. I don't need to sync or anything. I only have one tool path. Here's my tool path. Here's my machine. I can simply step through. I'm just hitting the S key to show you. There's the tool turned at 45 degrees. The spindle's turning counterclockwise. And now I start machining at 45 degrees, leaving this big B-axis assembly away from my chuck to avoid that collision to give me plenty of room so I don't have to stick the part out very far when I'm machining this part. Big advantages of these style holders. Again, I just downloaded them off of uh, ISCAR's website. There's many of them out there available, Sandvik, um, many holders to go grab from, but that's just a... Short little presentation on how to make a solid tool for the MT environment. Got any questions? Let us know. Thanks.